Welcome to the 13th episode of All Things Crypto, an Elk Finance podcast. I'm Shiloh, also known as LT Snake Plissken. And I am Freed. So today we're discussing a few things. Elknet V2, the recent token upgrade, and our experience at the 2022 Avalanche Summit. Woohoo! Please keep in mind, uh, we are not financial advisors, and this is not a financial advice. If you're looking for a financial advice, please find a licensed advisor in your area. As always, we want to provide people the resources who are interested in crypto, and if we get something wrong, please let us know. We obviously welcome your feedback. Um, come chat with us on our Telegram at t.me slash elk underscore finance underscore chat, or head over to our docs at docs.elk.finance to find some other links. All right, let's Perfect. get started. Let's get started here. So what is the deal with this upgrade? Why did we upgrade the token? So with the Elk token, we decided to upgrade to a third version of the Elk token uh, because the current version um, doesn't fit as well with the reservoir system that I'll talk about a little bit in a little bit with uh, ElkNet v2. Um, basically, there were some functions in the contract that we wouldn't be using. So they would just kind of be lying around and people would be asking about them and um, they wouldn't be exploitable, but we didn't want to give anyone the chance to take a look and, and wonder what was going on. Now, one advantage of having the new token um, meant we could kind of organize it in a better way. If we kept the old token and we did the upgrade, um, and we, we would actually have to mint a bunch of new tokens and put them in reservoirs. And um, we don't know what that would do necessarily to anyone tracking the token. If they weren't in the loop about the upgrade, they would just see all this elk being minted. And of course we would have kept an eye on our APIs. Those are those things that help us track where the tokens are and what's going on. Um, but uh, other projects might've wondered what we were doing and it might've caused some panic. So we thought the best way to do that was with a token upgrade. And not only that, the upgraded uh, token idea kind of allowed us to capture a governance vote. It's actually the first governance vote in the history of Elk. Oh, that explains the form you have to fill up uh, when you're upgrading it. Exactly. You get a few different options to uh, kind of select. And um, some of those uh, are basically going to be whether you vote for the exploit insurance um, contract, the treasury contract, the team vesting, um, you know, uh, and, and all of those things. So it would be great to uh, for you to go check those out. Uh, you can see them on the uh, ElkNet decks. That's app.elk.finance uh, when you go to upgrade your token. Um, you get to kind of cast those votes. Um, so that's pretty exciting. So if you don't upgrade your token, what will happen? That's a good question. Um, so right now, as of the recording of this podcast, um, the the rewards for the old farms have stopped. So there, you can no longer get those rewards. Of course, you can pull out the token and upgrade and migrate to the new farms. Uh, it's just, it upgrades one-to-one -one if you got 10 elk that you've got um, in old elk um, and you upgrade it to the new elk, um, you get 10, 10 new elk. So it's same for same. Um, and so if you put into the new farms, of course, the upgrade will resume. Same with single staking. Um, you, you upgrade it and put it in there and it'll be uh, good to go. We had a few days of overlap, um, but since that's being over, you want to upgrade as soon as possible if you want to keep earning rewards. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really interesting because I, um, I, the process for upgrading is extremely simple. Do you want to walk uh, listeners through that? Sure, yeah. If you haven't already, uh, all you have to do is head on over to app.elk.finance and uh, you'll see a little red box pop up uh, on the farms if you uh, haven't upgraded your token. Um, and uh, it'll, it'll tell you to withdraw from the farm, um, withdraw from the pool, upgrade your elk tokens um, along with that governance vote uh, using the the new UI uh, and then it'll uh, you'll, all you have to do is pair your elk tokens again and put them back into the new farm of course the first couple steps with the uh, pulling under the old farms and the pool are best done with the old uh, elk um, legacy app 
well, which is just the, the old version of our app, and that's legacy.elk.finance uh, to do that. Um, but it's relatively simple if you just follow those links uh, laid out right there. Perfect. And uh, can you explain a little bit more about the ElkNet upgrade? Yeah, so ElkNet V2 is actually one of the most exciting pieces of the upgrade in general. Um, so a few different things have changed. Um, now, uh, one of the most exciting things here is our move from a mint and burn uh, kind of way of, of transferring elk across chain to a uh, reserve reservoir system. Sorry, a reservoir system. Now, uh, previously with ElkNet V1, how it worked is a user would send their elk to a the bridge contract um, using our interface saying let's say they wanted to transfer from avalanche to 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 i don't know polygon so they uh, they would send their elk uh, to the the reservoir contract in the interface basically all they do is put their amount of elk they wanted to send uh, to polygon from avalanche and they would confirm it and all it would do then it was it would send that amount of elk to the um, avalanche uh, bridge contract, and then it would burn that amount of elk, as in get rid of it, take it out of circulation. Now, uh, ElkNet would pick that up, and then it would send a signal to the um, contract on Polygon to basically mint that amount of elk and send it to the user's wallet. Now, this kind of gets expensive over time because there's actually a few transactions happening here. Um, the first transaction that's happening is the user sending to the reservoir or to the uh, bridge contract, and then the bridge contract is burning the token, which is another con which is another uh, transaction in itself. And then uh, on the destination chain, the new elk is minted, which is another transaction, and then that amount of elk is sent to the user's wallet. So that's four transactions. Mm -hmm. And so when when you're doing more transactions, that costs more gas, as in a small amount of the native token. So when we moved to ElkNet V2, we wanted to minimize that. So on all the chains, except for Avalanche, um, we have the entire supply uh, of elk in a reservoir securely locked on each chain. So now all a user has to do um, behind the scenes. They, I mean, it still works the same. They can still go to the, the app.elk.finance and go to the ElkNet page and just, uh, you know, take their 10 elk from uh, Avalanche and transfer it to Polygon. So they would, um, you know, take, get 10, put 10 elk in, in the box there, hit transfer, um, and then, but behind the scenes, uh, what would happen is that 10 elk would be sent to the reservoir contract. Um, which ElkNet would pick up um, and it would say, okay, cool. And, and it waits for multiple confirmations from multiple sources, uh, RPCs in this case. Um, and when it's final and the transaction can't be reversed, uh, it would then send a signal uh, to the destination chain uh, that would send that same amount of elk minus a small fee. Um, on Avalanche, it's right now two elk. Um, other blockchains, it's 0.1. So we're taking a small fee now. Mm -hmm. um, and that is sent, uh, that amount minus the fee is then simply sent from the uh, reservoir to the user's wallet. So the only two transactions happening on the blockchain are user sends um, elk to reservoir contract, uh, reservoir contract on destination chain sends to user's wallet. So we're effectively reducing the the cost of transactions about three times because these that is impressive yeah and the mint and the burn were really uh were, were you know more especially the mint function um you know was a more expensive transaction so now we just have basically two single transactions that a user has to pay which is much cheaper and, it, and it's much cheaper uh, especially that matters on uh things like ethereum right when chains like ethereum that we move to so how, that that's how do you make sure that you have enough in these reservoirs? Is it going to be uh, balanced every night, every hour? Actually, the beauty of it is it doesn't have to be um, because we have the entire supply on every reservoir. So we have 42 million elk in every reservoir, of course, locked safely away. Um, we even have measures in 
against uh, a 51 percent attack that the that elk net will not uh let things go through um but uh so we never have to rebalance anything um and and theoretically all elk could pretty much go to any chain um you know and it wouldn't affect anything that is that is very smart yeah i, I love that idea yeah. and it's just oh man i am really excited actually about the uh, v2 yeah and it's you can go try it right now it's up it's live it's fast um we had to sort of some glitches with the chronos chain but it sounds like we uh, ball has as always come up with a creative solution and solved a great uh, a difficult problem so um yeah it, uh, it's working pretty well yeah um, the other thing about toilet is uh, just a user interface you know it has the elements of the old one but it's really nicely done it's a uh, it's a uh, it's very intuitive and uh it's very clean it cleaned out quite a bit compared to v1 yes the the ui upgrade uh is, is something to behold it's it was kind of a labor of love and um you know big thanks to our design team as well as uh our, our front end guys and uh the team we worked with to uh, to get this going um is it's been awesome um they've been all so great and it looks beautiful so yeah uh, for some uh, some of the listeners they do want to comment on how much work it was to get to this stage you know because it's not uh it's does it doesn't sound like it was an easy job <laughs> yeah and especially for developers uh you know a lot of uh, a lot of hard work um and uh some creative engineering to get to get everything working and making sure it's safe right so sometimes um you know we miss a little bit of targets uh but our, our main thing is we want to be putting out something that's going to work and going to be secure because if we look at recent exploits from like uh, you know wormhole and uh you know a few other bridges that uh, recently kind of have endured uh, an exploit we we kind of see that and we want to make sure that that's not going to happen and it's highly unlikely due to the way ElkNet works as kind of a ElkNet being the center of the ecosystem. It's kind of the checks and balances um, of of the ecosystem. And uh, it relies on multiple sources on each blockchain. So it doesn't ever listen to just one thing. It's, it's uh, you know, like three things is much better. And it, and it waits some time to make sure that that, um, that is for sure. And all the things agree. Um, and, and a very cool thing with with this v2 is it's kind of a step towards um being completely decentralized mm -hmm. um because um as we go forward here so with elknet v3 um will be kind of fully decentralized um that's when we're talking about nodes um being able to operate a node with elknet will be really exciting and and helpful and a portion of those fees that uh, that are happening will go back to uh to those who are, um, you know, um, running those nodes, um, and it'll, it'll work as a proof of stake thing where um, users users will be able to stake a certain amount of elk that will start quite high and then, uh, you know, reduce over time as we have more people in the network um, to ensure safety. So uh, we really can't wait for that. As well as uh, with ElkNet V2, one of the hidden features that you wouldn't know about is the interchain messaging layer um, that's able to send packets of data across different chains. Why would that matter? Yeah, so imagine if you wanted to, you were on Avalanche and you wanted to interact on with a smart contract on Polygon, mm -hmm. right? You could just straight up do that. Um, and it enables a lot of uh, features for developers who want to build on ElkNet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. is impressive. You know what? This is something which is really amazing about Elk. And this is something very exciting, actually, that uh, they are trying to stay relevant. They try to make sure that they have all these features built in to kind of work with all the chains and just give the developers the opportunity to just build in this ecosystem they're building. Exactly, and that's the whole bridging as a service, right? So um, ElkNet V2 will enable the use of proxy tokens. So being able to stake that moose, uh, like we've talked about in a previous episode, um, you know, all about Elk. Um, we did mention that, uh, as well as our Moose NFT episode, uh, mentioning proxy tokens, being able to um, use our upcoming software development kit to just straight up create a proxy token, um, which you know chains can or uh, projects can spend a very long time developing something, but with 
elk net uh, and, and a moose, all they've got to do is is kind of tick some options, uh, create a contract exactly the same from their uh, origin chain on the destination chain with the properties of the elk token, have these reservoirs set up and, um, you know, or, or they can do mint burn if they wanted to um, and uh, and go from there. All they got to do is add liquidity. So we're, we're kind of looking forward to being um, that collaborative open source piece of equipment that allows chains to connect. Well, these are exciting times to be part of this massive, interesting movement. Absolutely. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, how was the summit? Man, the summit was the coolest thing ever. And we were both there. It was, it was great. It was, it was <laughs> packed with people. Yes. Um, uh, a lot of smart people, which, um, uh, it was, it was humbling. Yes. But it was extremely interesting to see how people are looking at their developments and what they want to achieve. It was, it was impressive. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. And, uh, the collective IQ in the room must have been, you know, through the roof. And, um, not only that, uh, Avalanche, uh, did a really good job organizing and hosting. Kudos to them. Absolutely. Like it was the fanciest thing I've ever been to in my entire life. Um, those of you who were lucky enough to tune into our Friday night social, um, that we screamed and they're, they're feeding us <laughs> shrimp and, uh, you know, all sorts of things. All the cocktails and yeah. wine. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was, uh, it was one of the most impressive, uh, conferences, uh, I've ever attended. Absolutely. Um, it was well planned. Uh, and one of the things which was very interesting to me, Shiloh, being there was the openness of people from wide range of projects to talk to each other. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the coolest things was um, just being able to start a conversation with anybody and, and nobody like kind of wanted to walk away from, you know, the conversation. And I was, you know, talking about elk and how excited I was about it. And, you know, of course we're, we're working on partnerships in person with these projects who we've talked to on telegram, but never in person. And everyone is so receptive and it was just so awesome and collaborative. And everybody was just want, was like, you know, wanted to work together and, and putting faces to names, um, the amount of like, you know, different investors and, and venture capitalists that everyone wanted to talk about it and hear about elk, which, which was legitimately cool that, you know, I, I didn't, it's, it's not like I ever had to feel like I was pitching to somebody who wasn't interested, which was very cool. Uh, he was pitching though, you know, because he <laughs> lost his voice on a second day. <laughs> he was just trying to just talk to everybody and just uh, spread the whole, uh, uh, idea of uh, elk and what we are doing but you know what the the way they did it in the conference uh, for people who couldn't make it was uh, on your badge you had uh, your name plus your affiliation with the project and it was just as easy as looking at somebody's name tag and just basically starting a conversation it wasn't really anything like formal uh, that you have to get in a room with some people so it was very impressive but uh, going back on what it what it had for elk, do you want to elaborate on that, Shadow? Yeah, I think what it had for elk was a lot of partnerships, a lot of partnerships, a lot of interest from certain investors um, and you know venture capitalists that we talked to that were really excited about the concept of elk, um, and and so like I can't obviously say specifics right at this point, um, but uh, and I'm sure like some of that will come out in in given time, but. Um, it looks like this uh, vote will probably go through for the Elk Labs Treasury, which is great, um, which will allow us to incorporate uh, in the easiest way possible and kind of get investment uh, in, in Elk Labs uh, as well so that we can kind of pursue some of that those lofty development goals and really kind of get there. And um, we, we're kind of in the position where we want to build the technology first, which we're doing, and you can see mm -hmm. before we, you know, have uh, have that outside investment or anything like that um, but uh, getting that investment in the company itself uh, ideally so um, you know keeping the investors uh, safe and also uh, you know providing the most security for for the venture capitalists investing as well so everyone kind of wins right yeah, absolutely um, so yeah it's it was really exciting at the summit to just 
just network and connect. Everything yeah. was awesome. Seeing the talks, learning, um, you know, about various things like specifics about the Avalanche subnet, having having some great conversations with uh, various people from from Ava Labs talking about you know a subnet and whether we can get our hands on one or not. It you know is up to you know who knows, but uh, something like that could be very uh, very handy and um, maybe even uh, you know using ElkNet to bridge between subnets is, yeah, is very, very doable. So, um, yeah. yeah, very exciting. The, the other feature which was very interesting was the interest on the cap, uh, venture capitals on that. Uh, do you want to uh, elaborate on that? Yeah, yeah. I just uh, would think that they were all really wanted to hear more about Elk and really liked our model and what we were doing and the fact that we could kind of show something that was working. And uh, there was some definite interest in in investing in in the Elk Labs, the company. And I, I can't speak for exactly what that'll result in, but the reception was very positive. And it's uh, you know what that that I I, I was uh, there for two or three talks, and it was very impressive. Again, I can't really mention any names, but you could see that they were very open. Yeah. Uh, in uh, their interest, and they were really kind of wanted to follow up and just basically see how they can make something yeah. work with us. So yeah. that was very impressive, actually. And uh, I, I personally think that the team on Elk side, they did a fantastic job because, I don't know, it was like six or seven of us running around and <laughs> everybody was like a busy bee in, a, in each corner trying to talk, trying to make connections. And that was that was really interesting to see you know because yeah. uh, sometimes the day we were starting around uh, uh, 9 a.m and we didn't have the chance to just even sit down and have a lunch together <laughs> despite right. we were like 10 meters away from each other that's right and like by the end of the conference going in and everyone saying hi to me because they knew who i was because i talked to them <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it was very impressive, and uh, I was I was shocked, you know, because the other thing which was very interesting, and I think uh, for the community is going to be it, it, it's fun to hear this is elk is mo known more than what we think. Yes, that yeah. was the surprise to me. I yeah. mean, you're closer to the yeah. project than me, but yeah, <laughs> it was very impressive to me that a lot of people uh, were basically seeing elk on a name tag and yeah. shouting elk. And yeah, it's just like, like, wow. And so many people being like, oh my gosh, that's how I first got on Avalanche. I used ElkNet to get over there. And, and just people like, knowing who I was by, oh, I saw your videos or, oh, you're Snake Plissken. You know, crazy. Like, not everybody, but just to be recognized by a stranger is not ever an experience I've had. In yeah, but life. you have to put this in the context. Uh, again, I have to correct myself. It's not everybody, but it's yeah. big enough it's number. Big enough you know, because you're, yeah, yeah. you know, because you're talking about people from, uh, I don't know, Middle East, people yeah. from Asia, people from uh, Europe. It's yeah. just like a, such a diverse group from literally all around the world yeah there. for sure it was very cool um and i'm, I'm really looking forward to next year <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure you do um um do you think that these uh summits these uh, uh opportunities to talk is going to have a meaningful impact and uh, do you think that soon we're we're going to see something good coming out of this I mean, I can't speculate on exactly uh, what that would look like, but I think, I, I mean, I think so. I mean, we, we just got to meet with a lot of people, helped us organize our Avalanche Rush campaign that we're, uh, that we're launching right away, our Avalanche campaign, and um, on, on our, uh, you know, on our Elk decks, um, and, and just meeting with the people and, and garner the interest we garnered, there's no way it didn't have a positive impact. Of course it did. Like, it was great. No, absolutely. So, uh, I think well worth it. And the more conferences and, and things that we can be at, maybe, you know, we don't need the whole team there, but um, it certainly was great to have, a, you know, eight, what, nine people uh, from Elk there, um, which was very cool. It was very cool. And the other thing which I want to touch on is uh, it was... Um for me, I was very nervous to meet yeah. the team, yeah. you know, because yeah. uh, you talk to them, uh, I don't know, through uh, Team or Zoom or whatever, Telegram. and Telegram, and it's just like suddenly you're in the same place as them and you're talking to them. And 
It was such an amazing uh, experience and such a great team. Uh, very chill, very dedicated to the project. That was that was a lot of fun, and I just want to thank uh, everybody uh, from Elk Team, uh, which provided such a great experience. Actually, yeah, it was so good. Uh, it was so great to. It's so the first time I'd met you know the team I've worked closely with for this whole time uh, in person, which was excellent. Everyone is so awesome. It was just, it was incredible. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, the point I was trying to make here is just that the team has such a great energy and such a great passion for making this work. And at the same time, seamlessly working together was something which I personally observed. Yeah, which was awesome. So we never didn't know exactly how it would look, but it was, uh, it was great. So perfect all right um i believe i asked all the questions i had uh, <laughs> for uh, this episode sure and uh, yeah thanks again for tuning in everyone and uh we'll uh, be back with another podcast in the next few weeks and uh look forward uh, to uh, to seeing you guys again and uh, you can check us out on our new centralized exchange listing our our first uh with the uh, who.com that's h-o-o.com um, and we were listing there soon, but sure more to come. All right, guys, have a great one. Thank you very much.